So, welcome to your lesson on 4-7, completing the square. Completing the square is a method that you use to solve a quadratic equation. And that's our only objective here, solve quadratic equations by completing the square. So, so far we've talked about two ways to solve quadratic equations. The first one was using the zero product property. We factor one side of the equation, and you set both of those factors equal to zero. So basically that was uh, solving it by factoring. Uh, the second one is, let's say that there was no middle term, and then you just take the square root of both sides. So this method, completing the square, kind of combines both of them. Let's take a look at the first warm-up exercise. So, in this exercise, we're solving this quadratic equation for x. x squared minus 10x um, plus 25 equals 35. So ordinarily, I would subtract this 35 over here, and then I would try to factor that left side. But I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to look at this left side of the equation. And notice, maybe you will notice, that this is a perfect square trinomial. So let me review that for just a second. Perfect square trinomial. So, for example, since this one has a minus in it, I'll do it like this. A minus B squared. And so what the shortcut was for that is based on a pattern. You square the first one, so A squared. You multiply the two terms together, and then you double it, and you keep that same sign. So minus 2AB. And then finally you square the last one, plus B squared. So that fits this bill. The A here is, well, the, the first and the last term have to be perfect squares. X squared is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square. That's what I'm getting from these two. Okay, and the middle term is made up of 2 times the square root of the first times the square root of the last one. So the square root of the 25 is 5. The square root of the X, uh, X squared is X. So 2 times 5 times x is negative 2x. There. Okay, so this factors as x minus 5 squared equals 35. So now it's an equation, as we've seen in that section about solving by taking the square root. Just take the square root of both sides. x minus 5 equals, and then I want to uh, remember that I have plus and minus solve this equation quadratic, square root, and then finally add the 5 over. x equals 5 plus or minus square root 35. And you want to check to see if you're done by seeing 35, does it simplify any? Well, you got factors of 5 and 7. Those are two prime ones. There's no repeats, so that's got to be it. Okay, so essentially this is what this lesson's about. The problem is that the left side of the equation is not always going to be a perfect square. On this one, it was convenient that it was. So the lesson is all about trying to make it into a square, which is where the completing the square comes from. So not every single trinomial is a perfect square, but we're going to trick it into becoming one. We're going to rearrange the terms in some kind of way to turn it into a perfect square, and that process is called completing the square. So objective one, you're going to be able to solve some quadratic equations by completing the square. The picture here is a picture of uh, tangrams, and the tangrams are coming together to complete a square. There you go. So um, we're going to start off with a little activity. This activity involves algebra tiles. Now ordinarily, I think algebra tiles are a waste of time. But in this case, it gives you a very good visualization of what's going on when you complete the square. So first, let's talk about what those tiles look like. So the first one is x squared. For x squared, we're going to use a giant square to represent it, where each of the sides are x by x. So if you were to take the, square, or take the area of that, x times x gives you x squared, which is why it represents x squared. All right, so just for an x, 
we're going to use a rectangle. It's a slender one. It has the same dimensions as the square, as in the length of the square is x, but its width is just 1. So if you find its area, it's x times 1 gives you that x right there. And then finally, you just need the number 1. So for example, if I needed 5, I'd need 5 of these things. And it's just a 1 by 1 square. Its width is the same as this width there. Okay. I get a sip. Moving on. So, first thing is that you're going to need some algebra tiles. The way you're going to get those algebra tiles is from my website. So let me show you how to get those. First, call up your favorite web browser. Once it opens, let's navigate to the school website, www.dentonisd.org slash jnoel. Now, of course, you probably already have that bookmarked. Once we're here, we're going to go down to the Algebra 2 section. We're in Unit 4, solving the quadratic uh, equations. And scroll down a bit till you get to 4.7, completing the square. All right, once we're here, you have all the files associated with this lesson. And the second one there says pretty, pretty algebra tiles, and it looks kind of like a flag. Hover your mouse on it, it says PDF. Click it. It opens from Dropbox. Go ahead and print that thing out. Once you get it printed, cut those little tiles out, and then let's get back to the lesson. So now you have your tiles, and uh, you've cut them out, your pretty algebra tiles. And I want you to use your tiles to represent x squared plus 6x. So to represent x squared plus 6x, you need the big square tile, or one of those things, and then you need six of the slender x's, like this. Beautiful. Okay, so what you have to do is that you have to rearrange these seven pieces the big square and the six rectangles to try to make it into one complete square. But there's going to be a hole missing. There's got to be something missing. We are trying to figure out what number do we have to add to this. And whenever we say what number, we're talking about little squares, the tiny ones, L-I-L, little squares. Uh, how many of those things do you have to add to make it into a complete square? So, go ahead and pause the video right now, rearrange your figure, add the tiny little squares, and see if you can turn it into a square. So this is how we assemble those pieces to make the square. First you put down your large square, and you're going to put half of your little rectangles on one side of it and half on the other one. Take a look. Nice. So it leaves us a little gap, and we're going to fill that gap with squares. Count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So what I have just assembled here is a square, and its side length is x plus 3. The reason why it's x plus 3 is because across the top here is x, and each one of these is 1, x plus 3 on both sides. So whenever you square x plus 3, you get x squared plus 6x plus 9. And the 9 there is what it was, what it took to complete this square. It's those nine tiny purple squares. Okay. So here in this table, I want you to try a few more of these. Try it till you think you, you get a pretty good grasp of what's going on here. So pause the video. Try each of these expressions. For example, x squared plus 2x. You get one big square and two skinny rectangles. Try to assemble those to complete the square. Do that for all of these. Figure out how many of those little unit tiles that you have to add. And then write it just like I did that previous one. Like, What is it as a perfect square trinomial and what is it factored? Our goal here is to try to figure out how to do this in general so that you don't have to whip out your, your little squares every single time you work this. If I have x squared plus bx, what is it that I have to add 
to make this a perfect square trinomial to complete the square. So go ahead and pause and try your activity. So you're back. Were you successful? Let's take a look at what those answers should be. So on the first one there, oh, well, look at that. It's all the answers all at the same time. So on the first one, you're supposed to add 1, one extra little tile, and it becomes x plus 1 squared. Okay, on the second one, you're supposed to add four little tiles, and then it becomes x plus 2 squared. We did the middle one together. Skipping down to the fourth one, you're supposed to add 16 tiny little tiles, and it becomes x plus 4 squared. And then the last one, you're supposed to add 25, if you could have counted each one of those up, 25 little squares to get x plus 5 squared. Okay, so if you needed to, there's a little extra video on the construction of each one of those individual squares. We're just going to base everything on the rest of this on that middle one, the one that we had just looked at, the x plus 3 squared. So in general, whenever you want to complete the square, the technique is this. You take your x squared and you place it down, and you put half of your x's on one side, and then you put half of the x's on the other side. Whatever the number is from taking half, you're going to square that number, and that number squared is what you have to use to complete the square. It looks like this. I take half of that number, which is 3. I have 3 of them on the right side and I have three of them down here. And now I'm going to take that number, I'm going to square it. And that's where that nine is coming from. So see if this makes sense. If this side is three and this side is three, three times three gives me my nine. So in general, that's what you're doing. You're taking half of that middle term and then you're squaring it. Whatever number you get, that's what it takes to complete the square. So also notice this. The number that you get whenever you take half of, pull up the pen, whenever you take half of the middle term, that is also what you get, or what you put in the uh, parentheses whenever you square that binomial. Those numbers will always be the same. So let's look at it in general. Back a couple slides on that activity, I was asking you that. Like, we want to see what it looks like in general, in terms of a BX instead of a, an even number. I gave you only even numbers before because then it was easy to put half on one side and half on the other side. So now let's look at it with the BX. So it's the same exact technique. You want to first take that middle term, and you want to take half of that. So I'm going to take half of that, and I get B over 2. Now what do I do with that B over 2? I'm supposed to square it. So I square that, and I get plus, I'm just going to put this in parentheses, like b over 2 squared. This is the number that it takes to complete the square. And if I'm going to write this into um, a binomial squared, I write x plus, it's always the same sign that's right there in the middle, and then it's whatever I get after I take half of the middle term b over 2 squared. And that's the technique in general. So here's a picture taken straight from your book. And it's a pretty nice picture, especially um, in terms of the, the middle picture, what you're supposed to do geometrically to complete the square. You're taking half of your x's, you're putting them on one side and half on the other side, and then you're squaring whatever number you get from taking half of the middle term. So down here in the bottom in terms of algebra is exactly what we just derived on that last slide. So in general, to complete the square, especially when it just has an x squared right here in front, you take half of the middle term and then you square it. Let me go back one, a couple more slides here. I take half of this middle term here, that's 6, give me a 3, and then I square it and that gives me my 9. And I've just completed that square. Now it's easy to factor as a perfect square trinomial, x plus 3 squared, where this number in the binomial is the same number I get after I take half of the middle term. Okay, see you in the next video.